So we're back, super excited today on Build. We have a live studio audience of basically the whole Drift product team, and also Matt Kaplan, the legendary SVP of products at Acquia, who's here to talk to us about how pro great products are like great stories. So Matt, you are currently at Acquia, you were previously the Chief Product, product Officer at Log Me In, and you also run the gymnastics team at MIT, oh, geez, which yeah. I discovered deep, <laughs> deep in you the had, LinkedIn. You had to bring that up, did you? I did, yeah. yeah. Um, so welcome. Thank you, yeah. nice to meet you. Great. So I want to dig into the story that I've heard from our VP of product, Craig, on how great products are like great stories. This is something that I know you have a talk that you give on. So first, just what makes a great story and how did you make that connection? Yeah, so uh, it was probably about four or five years ago, I read a book. Um, it was uh, Creativity Inc. Mm. by Ed Catmull, and he's the founder of Pixar. And so it was just a book that I, I saw, it was interesting to read, and, and kind of I connected the dots between the way Pixar goes about making movies and the way products are, you know, are, are created as well. And there's a lot of similarities. Um, when you start, you just kind of break it down that you know, every story, every great story, and we learn to write stories right when we're really little, every great story has a, you know, um, a hero of their story, right? Like the protagonist. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, 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 that's like our target user um, for, for products. Every great story starts with like a tension that exists in, in the world. You think about Pixar's, you know, Pixar's movies and you know, Toy Story, for example, when, you know, Buzz Lightyear comes and throws Woody off and like that's the tension that exists in the story. And product has the same thing. They have like a tension or problem that we're trying to trying to solve. Um, there's always uh, in the end state, right, the vision, the happy ending that occurs in like Pixar films and what we're trying to do with product is is solve that problem and bring the bring the user to that to end state, that end vision. So that's similar. And then one of the things that Pixar does is they have sort of a these core beliefs that you have to kind of go along with to enjoy the movie. Mm -hmm. um, in Toy Story, it was the core belief that uh, all the, the the toys are telling the story from their point of view, and that they're kind of inanimate when when humans aren't around, and they come to life, uh, you know, afterwards. And and those are the core beliefs that, as product people, we need to have about why our product's different and and, and special. Uh, and then the last thing is sort of like the sequence of events that occurs, the chapters of the story, and that's sort of what we as product people need to do to kind of get our user and our customers from that tension mm -hmm. all the way to that vision. So the five things that I think that are similar are the, the target user, the, um, the tension that exists, the end state vision, the mm -hmm. core beliefs, and that narrative, that sequence of events. So then how do you, why does this comparison matter it specifically for products? Like how does this help us sort of do our jobs more yeah. effectively? Because you know, when, when you think about it, um, I believe that product management is really about two things. It's about mm -hmm. solving problems mm -hmm. and it's about telling stories. And, and it's about getting people, not only your users, but your organization to believe in where you wanna go as, as a company and what you're gonna do to help them solve their problems. So whether it's you're telling stories to salespeople, right, um, on why you know, you're trying to convince them you're doing the right thing with their roadmap or you're telling stories to engineers um, in the beginning of a sprint, right, about what we're going to build, or you're telling stories in, in an event or on stage uh, to, you know, to your customers. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all about storytelling as a product person, and some of the best product people, um, you know, that I can think of actually can do both really well. They can, they can solve the problems, mm -hmm. and they can also tell these, these stories to all of these different types of people. How do you help your teams get better at that? Because yeah. I think it's one thing to say, oh, we need to be good at storytelling as well as implementing and doing all the things we do day to day. But then how do you, how do you get them there? Yeah, so um, first of all, one, one, it's, it's reinforcement of the practice, right? So you know, practice makes perfect. So what, 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 I, what I do is um, every time somebody either gives a presentation or you know, whether it's on a small group or a big group, you know, I, I reinforce these points like, okay, who are you talking to? Who's your audience for this? Mm -hmm. And are you adapting your story to, you know, the executives? Uh, are you adapting it to the engineers? Like, how are you adapting your story? Uh, and then I also like reinforce like, what is the problem you're solving? The key problem and, and does it, so it's, that's one aspect. I think getting them to, to read, read the books and read the framework and kind of connect the dots mm -hmm. between the two is another one. 
And then just sort of like um, some of the things, if you if you look at like historically, we think of, um, you know, I'm a Steve Jobs fanboy, as most product people are, but like you think about like what Jobs, we think of Jobs as sort of the, the key storyteller, mm -hmm. you know, like his great storyteller, but actually his stories were told through his products, you know, the thousand songs in your pocket. That was a, a story that kind of, he, he created and he told, but the product is actually delivered on that. So I tell, I tell people to watch those videos as well mm -hmm. and to kind of learn how others have, have told stories about their products and brought products to market. And I'm assuming this isn't just like the act of telling your product team in person, but it's also in writing and sort of every yes. interaction that PMs are having. Absolutely. So like, um, so yeah, it's not just a, it's not just the nar the narrative. It's it's really about the narrative, I would say, rather than the mm. the actual telling of it. Um, you know, I don't think I'm a great storyteller. Just you know, hey, tell me a story about something that happened in your childhood. I, I don't think I could do that. But it's really about being able to articulate a narrative mm -hmm. that gets people to want to believe and want to b want to join you in your quest and and rally the troops. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's the that's the most fascinating part about this, where I think we we learn as product people the the basics and nuts and bolts of, of doing product design and, and development and scrum process and agile. And, but we don't really learn about like, how do we convince people to follow us, right? That lead mm -hmm. the leadership that we need to, um, you know, to do that. And I think storytelling is a way to achieve that. So then how do you, I think that makes a ton of sense when I think about the work that we're doing at sort of the quarterly mission level, which I think is a little easier to tell. But when you're, maybe you're an associate PM or you're on a smaller team with a smaller scope, how do you help them do it Yeah. on those like micro products? So it's funny you should say that because I, I said this the other day in our team, like what a associate PM does and what a head of product, a chief product officer to do are like exactly the same thing, except that the scope mm -hmm. is completely different. Okay. So. As an associate PM, you know you're working cross-functionally. You're telling stories about how you know you're you're solving the, a certain problem, and you're doing it on a very micro level. But uh, and 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 really, your your job is to get that little team to do you know to, to deliver on that vision. Mm -hmm. But as a chief product officer, like you're doing the same thing, but at a macro level, you're doing it with board members, you're doing the executive team, and uh, the only difference really is like like the screw up. You know, on a chief product officer is much more worse than mm -hmm. much worse than uh, than as an associate PM. So that's why I like to say like what I do and what what everyone does in the company should be the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I do I help them with you know you know specifically about how to craft that story that narrative and uh, how to unveil that through um, through the work that they do on a day to day basis. And like you know we talk about story writing as like you know in, in the agile sense. I mean that's mm -hmm. what that's what they're doing. They're telling the story of how we're gonna solve a user's problem. Do you have an example of one of those sort of smaller features that you've helped someone work on? Um, let me think of a feature. Um, yeah, so uh, an example of, of, of this is, when I was back at LogMeIn, um, is sort of uh, the, the problem we were having, and this is sort of a, a, another way of getting, like you mentioned the idea of a mission, mm -hmm. getting people, but the problem we were having was that um, we had a lot of failures in, in recording uh, when we did a, a, um, a screen sharing session, mm -hmm. an audio session, the recording would fail. And so um, we, instead of sort of thinking of it as like, what is the, you know, what is the task we're gonna give to the developers to solve this problem? We said, well, what is the, what is the mission? The mission really that the team was no defects. And so instead of sort of giving the team kind of a, a story and saying, you're gonna do this, this, then this, and this, we said, mm -hmm. your, your, your job is to solve this tension, this problem of a recording failure, and we want you to do whatever you can to solve that problem. And so the team actually, what, what, why that was good is because the story that we gave them was, was an important one, mm -hmm. but also allowed them to use their creativity to come up with a, a number of different ways to solve that problem. And uh, they came back and said, well, what if we have to rewrite the software? And we said, okay, then rewrite the software. Go ahead and do it. And sure enough, um, recording failures, like they dipped. Um, I would say they dropped over the course of the next three months. Mm -hmm. They dropped down to pretty much zero after cool. that. So then as a team, when you're trying to get better at this, I imagine you've come into places where this might not have been the case. I think we use story times. We use missions here. So we're relatively familiar as a team. But when you're going into a new company, how do you get people sort of rallied around this idea? And I, I start by, um, by, by doing it. And mm -hmm. so like I've given, 
I've been at Acquia for um, about six months now, mm -hmm. and every chance I get to stand in front of somebody, um, I articulate uh, the story of like where it is that we're going mm -hmm. and reinforce that every time. And sometimes I, I would say, People think that if you tell the same story more than once, it's boring and you're, you're, you're being unoriginal. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the exact opposite, that you have to tell the same story over and over and over again until it, it sinks in. Uh, and so I just started by, by you know, uh, first of all, understanding kind of the stories that already existed in the company and mm -hmm. which ones we wanted to kind of turn up the volume on, amplify, right? Mm -hmm. And started to amplify stories around like, Personas, as one example, like how do we, how are we solving the problem for, you know, developers and marketers and, and IT operators? Like, what are we doing to solve their problem? And so that, you know, over time the stories they, they need to um, uh, evolve. Just like when you think about Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. The story of Star Wars is like the same story that's being told for the last, you know, 20, 30 years, thirty years, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's you know good versus evil. You know, the evil empire versus the force, and yeah. like it's the same story, but they're the, the it, they've they've added to it over and over, and mm -hmm. have different characters, and and so that's the heart of the story. And I, I look at what Drift is doing, and like you just wrote a book, right? You wrote a story on what you know conversational marketing is all about, and and I think that's uh, cementing sort of that that core story, and then you'll add to that over time, I'm mm -hmm. sure. How do you know that when you're telling these stories that that your team is picking up on them in the yeah. way that you want them to? Because again, I think. A lot of the questions I get from listeners are about, okay, I heard what you said, but I'm trying to implement it and I'm running into all these problems. So how do you how do you know that it's working? Yeah, the only time I've I've I mean the the the, the time that I've I've seen this um, the most is when you start hearing back the story that you told, mm -hmm. right? And so when you hear it from a salesperson's uh, mouth, or you hear it from a uh, you know, solution architect or somebody that actually is taking your story and making it better. Mm -hmm. I always say like you, you want to give the, the story to the team. Mm -hmm. And if the story comes back uh, um, with something that you didn't think of that was more interesting than what you gave them, mm -hmm. then you know it's working. If it comes back with like, like that's not the way I would have told the story or right. it's kind of, it's flat or it just doesn't have any depth to it. They mm -hmm. didn't add anything to the story. Mm -hmm. Then I think it's your, it's the message isn't, isn't sinking in. Got it. So then how do we get better at telling stories? What are the tools and the books? I know you mentioned Creativity Inc, but what else yeah. can we as product people do to get better at this? Yeah, so, um, well, I would definitely say, um, you know, the, the practices. So so the different me media that you mentioned before, like mm -hmm. are you writing is, the, is in written form, presentation form, um, you know, some, you know, some others do. Um, songs, right? You know, to, to like, we used to have a song for "Join Me," right? That was like the hold music was part of the, and like that was used as, uh, yeah, like, and that was that was Craig's idea. Uh, but like the story, like like it's being told in different different forms, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give you another example. Um, I put um, posters up around the office recently uh, that reinforced the personas that we're targeting mm -hmm. and the goals that we're achieving that we're trying to achieve, and like what we're gonna launch um, in, in our spring releases, and that's all over the office. So like every day somebody comes in is we're reinforcing mm -hmm. kind of that, that story, right? I'm trying to think of other ways, but yeah, some books, so like definitely um, reading a lot uh, mm -hmm. on, on ways to do this, learning about storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a funny uh, you know, thing that uh, there's, there's, there's a, um, a lot of science, uh, neuroscience that's been, um, research that's been done about storytelling. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, in fact, the the listener actually their brain pattern brainwaves are actually the same mm -hmm. as the storyteller uh, during that process. So they're actually uh, empathizing a lot with that, and they almost feel like they were there mm -hmm. during that time. So I just think the, the 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 art of telling the story is getting people to empathize with it and really to own it as well. And I think what's interesting as a PM is thinking about, especially in that example of having maybe a feature that's not as huge or as massive or as impactful as you might think it is, just figuring out how to build that empathy within your team is something that I'm, I know people are probably gonna ask about. Yeah, definitely. Any advice on that one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the empathy, I mean like customer meetings. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I just set an objective of you know, every product person on the team has to have 12 customer meetings a quarter mm -hmm. uh, and they've got to participate and they've got to track it. And so mm -hmm. you know, just forcing that discipline, it's, it's a, it's a muscle memory thing, right? You've got to practice it, right. right? 
and and it's unnatural to to some people. Others are are really good at it, and they're like they they want they need that, and they want that. They know mm -hmm. that that's going to make them a better product leader, product mm -hmm. person. But others, you kind of have to push them out the door and have those conversations. Yeah. So on that topic, I want to switch gears a little bit to just product in general and pro product performance. So I'm assuming you've worked with tons of product managers and product leaders in your career. Yeah. So what are some pieces of advice that you have for people who are just getting into this role and then maybe who are hoping to make the jump into product leadership? Yeah. So the first thing um, is uh, to establish a point of view. Like a, mm -hmm. a product person needs to um, not only like own the, own the problem, um, own the problem, but also establish a point of view about how they want to solve that problem. And mm -hmm. many times product leaders, they kind of defer that. They, or product managers say, well, that's, that's not my responsibility. It's, mm -hmm. it's, and I say, you gotta own it. And, and so that's the first thing is like, really not only falling in love with the problem, but also then having a really strong point of view about how you would solve it. But it has to be weekly held. That's the other thing about a product person is we have to be humble um, mm -hmm. and like let go of, of an idea that you know just isn't gonna work. Right. Uh, and then the second thing is um, something I, I've, I've mentored a lot of people on is, is socialize a lot early and mm -hmm. often. Like even if the idea is very early and, um, uh, and you haven't worked it all out, um, but you kind of have to tell somebody ahead of time, hey, this is just an idea, like mm hasn't -hmm. worked out, I haven't worked it out yet, but what do you think about it? Because what that does is as you tell the story, um, it either they either say tell you, that's great and they add to it they mm -hmm. help you develop it mm -hmm. or they actually say that's you know they convince you it's a terrible idea and you should right. pursue it right so that's the other thing it's really about socializing um, you have to be careful though because sometimes you know early in my career I got like the I was the guy that had like all these ideas and like you know like there people couldn't follow right. follow me so you really have to be clear about like why you're doing that and upfront and tell them yeah, that's something I've heard from DG and our marketing team about writing headlines first or testing headlines on Twitter or something and just getting that first initial reaction as yeah. sort of, is this worth going down this path or not as a way to kind of test ideas. Yeah, definitely. So um, so those are two, two, uh, two of the things, mm -hmm. um, having a point of view, socializing, and then like be a better storyteller. Like a lot of people, um, I would say they, uh, they can only, they really comfortable inside of email or mm -hmm. they're uh, comfortable in a, PowerPoint setting, um, but I would say like get outside your comfort zone. Um, get get on you know get on stage. I think that's one area that like I think makes people really nervous. Yep. Being in front of a live audience, being in front of a, an executive uh, team too, and so I give I give people that opportunity to like speak at a you know quarterly business review or mm -hmm. you know product review or get in front of the executive team to pitch an idea or concept. Um, and just giving those opportunities to them really helps them develop. Uh, you know, remove the fear and, and right. develop their skills. Have you seen any anything in particular about people who make the jump from individual contributor, product manager to product leader that is sort of like a consistent theme in people who are successful at that transition? I think it's confidence. I mm -hmm. think it's, um, you know, as product product leaders, we, we have to be really confident in the unknown. Like, mm -hmm. and, and um, not many people are, are com comfortable doing that. And you know, the more you uh, the, the more you grow into into a position or a company, I think the the less unknowns there are. You know, like how people say, well, they always believe that like the executives know everything, and then they're just not telling us. And right. that's not always the case. The executives know actually less than what the people in the trenches know. Yeah. Uh, and so um, it's really being comfortable in that and living in that unknown space. Um, that's one area I think of, of growth for for people. Okay. And I had one other question I wanted to ask you, which is, again, I hear this all the time from people who are listening, which is they're evaluating new companies, they're looking for new product teams to join, and they want to know how to evaluate those opportunities. So as over the course of your career, how have you navigated that decision at this point? Like, what do you look for yeah. in a new team? So um, first of all, the, the advice I always give to people is um, don't go for the job that you want now. Like, don't go for the job that you're looking for today. Mm -hmm. Think about your kind of ideal job. Think two jobs out and say, how can this next job I'm going to, the next company, give me the skills that I'll need to develop in order to get the next job? Mm -hmm. So unless you're at the end of your career, then it doesn't matter. But like, if you're thinking about like your career, just think two, two jobs out and then go for the job. And then look at that company as like, am I gonna learn, what am I gonna learn mm -hmm. at that company? Am I gonna be able to exercise these skills um, are the is the product leadership there people that have been successful before mm 
mm-hmm. and I can learn from that. Um, one of the things about going to Log Me and um, was the founder, you know, was a was a product person, and um, that really helped me, helped me develop my skills having a, a product founder. And that's the same thing here. Yeah, right? absolutely, awesome. So I just have one last question, which is, what are you reading right now? Any book recommendations? What am I the reading? Team? Uh, um, the I'm actually reading because I'm in an open source company. I'm reading the Cathedral and the Bazaar. So, um, which is don't know. Yeah, that. it's uh, it's like the seminal book on open source. Uh, and since I'm new to open source, it was one of the books that, that re- uh, recommended. Um, but the last one was, um, I think, um, Playing to Win. I think that was one. Mm-hmm. I think actually I got recommended yeah, for we, Yeah, yeah. We, we read that one here too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Matt. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Everyone listening, we're going to need six stars for this episode. I usually ask for five, but I think Matt deserves six. Give him a shout out and let me know what you think. Great. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Sweet.